Good morning, everyone. Very warm welcome to our worship. Really good to see you and uh, very good to be with you this morning as we continue our Easter journey. Uh, just by way of notices, uh, and that's firstly to say uh, ahead of our APCM, uh, the electoral roll is being updated. Uh, if you want further clarification or to update, update details, please do see uh, Mr. Cliff Warner, who's just waving, I think, as we... Perfect. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, date for your diaries, and we will have this in uh, written or published form later. But uh, in May, May the 9th, uh, here, uh, that's Thursday the 9th of May, at 7 o'clock, we're going to have a benefit service for Ascension Day. Ascension Day in old money, uh, some of us might remember, was one of the holy days of obligation, when the faithful were encouraged nay, cajoled uh, into receiving Holy Communion. Uh, well, of course, uh, it's always an invitation from our Lord. But I'm really thrilled to say that we've got a guest preacher and presider, uh, Bishop Jack Nichols. Uh, Bishop Jack is a former Bishop of Sheffield uh, and is just a fantastic preacher and storyteller. So he will be coming and leading our service uh, and that is Thursday, the 9th of May, at 7 o'clock. If you happen to be free, do please come and bring 10 friends. And last, but definitely not least, just to say that later today at Four Mark, at 4 o'clock, we will be enjoying a service of prayer book, evening prayer, which, of course, all are welcome to attend. So we continue our worship this morning with our processional hymn, number 140. And so we worship now as we live. 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please would you be seated. So again, as we continue our Easter journey today, so we spend a moment in quiet as we acknowledge the presence of our risen Lord here amongst us this day, as we prepare to worship in spirit and in truth, in word and in sacrament. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins together with a sincere and true heart. Now may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God.
as we stand the special prayer appointed for today, the third Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We sit now for our first Bible reading. This morning's reading is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 to 20. It's where Peter addresses the Jews gathered in the temple and tells them of the resurrection of Jesus the Messiah. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses." And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him his perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. So I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our gradual hymn together, number 590. King is upon
Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This term in my lay reading course, the module is called Reader Specialist Training. And we've been covering all of the key and might I say most difficult doctrines of the Christian faith. Atonement, Christology, Trinity, creation, and resurrection. Each of them has been very challenging and caused me to think more deeply about each of these topics. Of course, I still have a lot to learn and ponder, so please see this talk as a work in progress. Um, when Steve Longdon and I were looking at the lectionary, this Sunday's readings were fit perfectly with what I wanted to speak about, which is eschatology the end times. So I'm thankful to both Steves uh, that they allowed me to preach today specifically and on this topic. And I warn you, it's like spoiler alert, um, there are some difficult concepts which are presented and you'll probably see I actually end up asking more questions uh, than answers. But it's like a piece of string that keeps getting longer and expanding. Um, but hopefully I will give you some things to think about um, that you can take into your daily prayer life and in your daily life. So we as Christians, don't we? We always have a light and bright world, uh, view of the world, and we do have hope. 
but we also know as we sit here on this side of Easter that our Savior died a gruesome death on the cross. He lay in the grave for three days, but then he rose, and so we do have hope. But what is the point of the resurrection? How do you explain this phenomenon since that has never happened before or after? And why did a person in the middle of history come back to life and was raised from dead and went on to heaven to find eternal life? So the definition of eschatology, which I did have to look it up, as I said prior to this course, is it's about the end times relating to the end of life and end of history, whether of an individual or of the world. It actually comes from the Greek meaning the last things. And it refers to our expectations of what happens next. So first, I'm going to give a short overview of the historical context of debates over the resurrection. Second, I want to speak about what our Christian beliefs are today. And finally, what does it mean? So my title of the talk is Life After Death. What does it mean for us? Or another view, how Jesus' resurrection turned our world upside down. So historians and philosophies in the first 500 years of the last millennium, they had quite a bit to sort through, as you can imagine, after Jesus' resurrection. How do you explain it? And one thing, as we hear in the readings today, clearly the disciples did not expect him to be resurrected and come back to life at that point in time. As first century Jews, they knew that the concept of the resurrection was at the end of history and at the end of judgment. And so if you can imagine, if they thought he was going to be resurrected, why were they so glum and sitting around? They would have been waiting at the tomb, wouldn't they have? Um, but the good news is that they do get to see the G risen Jesus. And so throughout Acts and Paul's writing, uh, we see that he has fulfilled the scriptures that they had heard, just not in a way they had expected. So there was a lot of debate by historians and philosophers at this point in time over whether the body is resurrected or only the soul. Uh, as you can imagine, with the backdrop of the Greeks, Plato was quite influential. And the Greeks at the time believed only in the spiritual world, not the physical world and the material world. And so many at that time, including Origen, Irenaeus, uh, St. Augustine, they all struggled with how do you reconcile our Greek worldview with the Bible and what had happened. But the concept, obviously, of a resurrection, and we see this in our reading today, is that it clearly was a physical dimension. Jesus says, look at my hands and my feet, which most likely, of course, had the scars of the cross. And he says, see that it is me, it's my, I myself, touch me. All the different senses, see me, touch me. He showed them his hands and feet. And then he says, do you have anything to eat? They give him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. So how down to earth can Jesus be? And yes, that is a bit of an intended pun. Jesus has come down to earth. And he's showing them that he can still eat, they can touch, they can see him. He's not a ghost. He really is here on earth with them. And doing things he had done previously, walking, talking, speaking with them, eating. By the way, don't you love Luke's uh, account, his detail? It's not just any fish, it's broiled fish. We have a lot of detail here. Um, and actually, in the New Testament, there were at least 10 different instances where Jesus appeared after his death. This wasn't just a one-off. They happened to see it. 
This happened time and time again. And in one instance, he appeared to 500 of his followers. Talk about witnesses and evidence. Um, and as I said, you couldn't make this up, right? With that many witnesses, it was real, it occurred, it happened. I, I do have to say one dramatic difference though is he definitely was no longer bound by time and space. He just appears, you know, so he is different. The before and after is different. Um, as I looked at this and thinking, uh, we were having discussions within our family about what it, does it mean? What happens after death? And your soul and your body and all sorts of complications that that raises as you start thinking about it. And my 21-year-old son actually raised the question, well, what happens with a baby? You know, what, what does that mean afterwards? What body do they have? And so you can take this and just keep thinking more and more deeply about what happens to us. And actually in the Middle Ages, I think they, they were questioning as well. And they had worked out for themselves that our risen body would be a 30-year-old, which is 30-ish, what Christ was when he died. That was their ideal. Um, whatever we end up at the end days, we know that our bodies will be made perfect. So that's the, the good news. We will no longer have our withered and decayed bodies. They will be different. And this whole concept of the end times and the enlightenment, they sort of said, no, no, it doesn't really happen. Um, but then back in the late 19th, 20th century, it, there's been a resurgence of people saying, let's look at the end times. So what does it mean? And there's a concept of now and not yet. And we hear this about the kingdom. The kingdom has come to earth. And we are in these middle times. Um, and, but the complete fulfillment of it will come in the future. So we live in this middle phase between Christ's risen life and the end times. So what is the belief in the world today? And what do you believe? Uh, do people believe that Jesus was raised from the dead? Actually, I went and looked at a poll to see what, what do people think today? And surprisingly, in 2022, there was a poll. 45% of the UK population, believers, non-believers, believe that Jesus was resurrected. And that has been the case for the last 50 years, that at 40 to 50% believe so um, given how few people ch attend church and the rise of secular, isn't that actually encouraging? That this phenomenon that happened, uh, people see that it is unique and different. And you can't really, you have to have one way or another. You either believe or you don't. Only 5% in all the polling say, I don't know. So this is something that really divides and says yes or no. So as part of the creed, which we'll be reading shortly, we state we believe the following. Christ was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And in the prayer of penitence, um, it says, you have not, we have not lived by the power of the resurrection. And if you remember at Easter with the five pictures, one of them was about a rock being propelled. So Jesus's power that occurred at the resurrection is here in our world today. But it was unique, but it also gives us a hope for the future. Your future is certain, and it is a personal thing. We're not just spirits that are joining a generic universe. Christ died for you. And we have an identity beyond the grave. And making his body part of that resurrection allows us to value our world and all that is in it today. So how do we live our lives knowing that there is a new creation, and knowing that our Savior has conquered death, and there is new life. We can look forward 
there is something beyond the grave. We have a hope and a faith in our risen Lord, and we will come to see him once when our earthly lives have come to an end. So I, it called to mind a time, many time years ago, I went to Israel um, to visit a Jewish work colleague and stayed with him and his family. It was a wonderful time. We were out for dinner, uh, having a, a you know, normal evening, and somehow it came up. He did not believe in life after death. He thought, in his mind, the world, that is it. That is all there is to our life. And I remember thinking, A, how different this was from my view, and being sad, and thinking, how can you, there be no hope of beyond? And also, what is the point of being here then, if there is nothing beyond? Why else would we even exist? What are we here to do and be? But we know that God says that we will be glorified, so we can trust in this evidence of the resurrection. Um, and we see this with the disciples, right? After this turning point, they go out to all the ends of the earth and they preach about what they have seen. They preach about Jesus and the resurrection. And they're even more energized than before to the point of martyrdom. All but one of the disciples died for their faith. They had the truth and the evidence which they have shared with us. So living in Christ's power of his resurrection means that we can be bolder. We can be bolder to proclaim the good news. We can be bolder to speak about our faith and bolder to know that our future is secure. May you trust in our risen Lord. Amen. So I now need to be bolder. I was going to use the top version of the creed, but I think in order to complement, we need to use the bottom one. So, shall we stand together and profess our faith in the words of the creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Savior, on this third Sunday of Easter, we remember your suffering on our behalf and thank you that you have risen and are alive today. We come before you with hope, which you have taught us to believe in. We come offering you for praise for our life here on earth and as your chosen people, asking that you will listen today to our hearts and give us comfort, rest, and guidance. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for the church and our local parish. Lord, we give thanks for those who share their lives with us, our families, our friends, this congregation, and our neighbors. We thank you for all those who help to work together in this community. As we build up our common life, please make your church be a place where people can feel comfortable to turn to. We pray that we may be aware of those who are needy and provide for those who lack food, 
companionship, shelter, or work, particularly in these times of economic difficulty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you gave us a beautiful world to live in and to care for, and you said it was good. We know that in many areas our stewardship has been lacking. Yet, through the victory of Jesus Christ over death, we know that you can also restore all things in glory. And so we pray that you will provide the energy to make change happen and give us new ideas about how we can maintain and take care of the world you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you the violent situations in the Middle East and Ukraine, which continue to impact so many people. We pray for the innocent victims of these wars and ask that you will let peace prevail. Thank you for the peace your son promised, not as the world gives, but willing, deep, lasting, and abiding peace. May the leaders know your wisdom and understand their duties and obligations to bring these conflicts to an end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing, Lord, we pray for the sick. We pray for those who do not share our Easter joy, especially those who are living in the shadow of darkness and despair and for those whose illness narrows their view of the world. We especially pray for all those who have requested prayer and the quietness of our hearts. We raise before those who you know are also in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died and whose anniversaries we recall. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, in the week ahead, may we reflect your love in our families, our church, and our community so that the world can see that we are followers of Christ and draw others closer to know him and what his risen life can mean for them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As you are able, please would you stand? The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the risen Lord. Alleluia. And so may the peace of the Lord be always with you. you. We offer one another a sign of that peace. We continue with our tree hymn number 311, Lord Enthroned in Heavenly Splendor.
Nice descant choir, thank you. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men, women, and children the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, Inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. To you be glory and praise forever, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. 
blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The Easter Invitation. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! On this occasion, I will omit the prayer of humble access. Please do come forward to receive.
Let us pray. O living God, whose Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may see in him and in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray God's blessing so that we too may be a blessing to others. Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon each of you and upon all whom you love and pray for this day, this week, and forevermore. Amen. And as we're able, we stand to sing our final hymn, number 166, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
surely the greatest line in hymnody, the potentate of time. So go now in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Grant, O Lord, that what we have said with our lips we may believe in our hearts, and what we believe in our hearts we may practice in our